I'm Doug Caldwell at the University of Florida Collier County Extension. Today we're looking at a typical uh, backyard in the estates where you have a lot of pine trees that are dying after hurricanes Irma and Wilma. My office gets a lot of calls about what to do with these pine trees, what to do about these pine beetles. People see the sawdust and the pitch oozing out of the dying trees and they think it's the beetles that are killing the trees, but the beetles are not killing the trees. The beetles are like buzzards on a roadkill and they're just helping convert that standing tree to essentially compost and mulch a lot faster. So in a way they're doing you a favor. So you don't need to spray for the beetles. The pine trees are in a, a complex ecosystem that not too many people understand when they move into these properties and it requires some forestry management. So to explain that better, we have Clark Riles with the Florida Forestry Service to give us the big picture. Hello, my name is uh, Clark Riles with the Florida Forest Service. I'm your county forester for the three county area, Lee, Hendry, and Collier County. And as Dr. Doug Bug said, I'm the guy who usually comes out when I come out and see trees that have been injured and stressed in our area. And as he talked about earlier, it's not really the pine beetles that are the problem, it's actually the management practices we do on our property that are the problem. And we can really kind of break that down into three things. Number one, our pine tree areas out here you're going to see, we have way too many pine trees for what the ecosystem can hold. Um, if you were to walk around an area like this in a healthy ecosystem, maybe 10 or 15 trees would be able to survive. Uh, but out here you'll notice around us we've got well into the hundreds of trees. So way too many trees. What would usually thin out our trees in our ecosystem? It would normally be fire. Um, if you know anything about Florida ecosystem, we're the lightning capital of the world. So we need to have fire in our ecosystem every single year to help clean it out, take out disease, dying, and old trees, and replace them with new and healthy, vigorous trees. Now you can see an area like this. This, this area out here has probably not seen fire for 10 to 20 years, so we're way behind the curve on needing fire. But then we got another problem is it's really hard to burn ecosystems like this, especially with homeowners that only have an acre or two acres. Having a healthy fire out here is just going to be too much usually for our landowners to handle. Too much flame links, too much smoke, just too much stuff like that that people can handle. So that becomes an issue. So now we're going to get what do we need to do. So if you have pine trees in your property and you want to have bright green grass, especially this time of year in the spring and the before we start getting the rains, you really need to try to capture all the leaf litter or pine needles that are come around these pine trees. They drop it naturally down. So what you want to do is you want to gather it up and keep it in these areas. So that's your best management practice to try to keep pine trees and green grass. But it is an evolving ecosystem and it is something that's very difficult to manage for. So if you buy a piece of property like this, you need to understand that you are going to need to manage it at some point. You're going to need to either Either mechanically treat it or possibly just have a change in species so you might lose your pine trees but now you can plant other trees like oaks or possibly fruit trees so think about different alternatives as opposed to just the pine trees but if you want pine trees you're gonna have to do some sort of mitigation efforts and really try to keep that local uh, pine straw underneath it and keep the keep the uh, the nitrogen and the grass loving uh, nutrients away from it so that's the best point I could take with managing for our pine trees in our backyards 